Hi, this is Patrick from STH. For most people, servers and overclocking do not go together. Many say it is impossible to overclock mainstream servers aside from specific models designed for applications such as high frequency trading. Today, we're gonna to cover a little trick we've been using for years, which allows you to overclock your RAM in a system. We've been using this trick on memory since the Intel Xeon E5 2600V1, Sandy Bridge generation of CPUs when we have the wrong memory speed and are in a time pinch in the lab. As you can see, we're running our Micron DDR4 2400 ECC RDIMMs at 2666 MHz. We are gonna show you how to do this and then give a few tips and tricks if you wanna give it a try yourself. First, a disclaimer, by doing this procedure and overclocking your memory, you may damage components, so we're not responsible if you do so and urge you not to. With that out of the way, let's get to overclocking. Boot into your BIOS and go to memory speed settings. On most super microsystems, like the one we are using, Go to Advanced Chipset Configuration, Northbridge, Memory Configuration, and here we need to disable enforcing the plan of record for memory speed settings. We can then change the memory frequency manually to DDR4-2666. After that, save and reset. Normally, if this is not working, you'll get stuck at an initialization step. If so, clear the CMOS and continue. If you go back to the BIOS at this point and look at the memory topology, you'll see the RAM running at 2666 megahertz. Booting into Linux, we may want to verify that everything is working correctly. To do so, we run DMI decode double dash type 17, and we can see that the speed is 2400, but the configured clock speed is 2666 megahertz. Okay, time for some of our tips on this. First off, do not do this. Just buy the correct RAM speed. Really, this should only be used in extreme memory pinch situations, if in the lab, or maybe if you want an ever so slightly increase your memory performance. It turns out that running memory at the higher clock speed does not change other timings, so you get the tighter DDR4-2400 memory timings, but with a 2666 megahertz clock. Second, don't be greedy. 2133 to 2400 is okay, 2400 to 2666 is okay, but trying to do two steps will likely lead to long-term instability. We have run single increments with applications for up to three months at a time without issues across multiple systems and have not had any issues, but longer term stability with two increments, we've seen problems. So just do one. Third, do not try this on AMD Epic. We have close to a dozen AMD Epic systems in our data center lab right now, some single socket, some multi-socket, and they have all failed with this procedure and require a hard CMOS reset, which means opening the chassis and pulling the battery in most cases. Just skip this on Epic. We've not tried it on our Cavium Thunder X1 or Cavium Thunder X2 test beds yet, but suggest skipping those as well. There are a few systems designed to have overclocks, especially memory overclocks for high frequency trading industry folks. These systems are the ones you want to go after if you really want to go faster, just buy the right system. Finally, most vendors have the same memory speed label that we used or something like memory frequency. That setting is easy to find, but the plan of record setting may be called something else. If you don't see the POR setting and are not able to overclock, dig around for that setting in your system. Most Intel-based systems will have something similar, so you may just have to go hunting. Hopefully, these tips will let you give this a try if you're curious or just want to show your colleagues that indeed you can overclock a server. Perhaps the best use case that we found so far for this is to win lunches at the office, betting and showing that indeed overclocking on a standard server is possible. Thank you for watching. Take some time to visit the STH main site, check out other videos we have, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.